All right, here's our video on, um, here's our second simple harmonic motion video. We're going to talk about vertical springs this time. Um, and basically, all I want to do is prove to you that vertical springs are the same thing as horizontal springs. Um, we're going to do the same math with them, even though the energy considerations are a whole lot different. Um, we've worked a couple problems in class with vertical springs already. I just want to show you that the simple harmonic motion part of this and the finding the maximum speed part of this uh, is almost the exact same thing, or is the exact same thing in a lot of cases uh, as what we did before. <coughs> so, I apologize for that. Um, here's our unstretched spring with the spring constant K. What we're going to do is add a mass to that. I'll slow this down a little bit. We'll add a mass to that. We'll put that mass at rest down at the bottom. Um, so it's going to stretch out a little bit. And for convenience sake, what we're going to do is call that distance H. Call it D, call it H, doesn't really matter. Um, and then to get our problem going, we're going to pull it down to a distance of A beyond H. So, measured from H, we're going to pull it down a distance of A, different than H. Now, we know that when we let go, this thing is going to bounce back and forth between that, well, it's going to bounce around the mass at rest point, a distance of A on either side. Um, so, looking at the mass at rest there. The system is at a new equilibrium position when the mass is at rest um, after we've hung it. So, that's the equilibrium position. It's going to bounce around that at distance of A. But let's go ahead and, based on what we know about the spring, define H in terms of the thing. Because that's going to be useful to use a little bit later on. So, for that block, since it's at equilibrium, we've got K, H up and mg down and so we know that kh is equal to mg and so we can say that h is mg over k or if we wanted to we could say that k was mg over h those are just some of the definitions we get out of that so let's look at um, finding the maximum for this hanging spring now, we know, we know um, that the energy at the bottom is going to be equal to the energy at equilibrium or equal to the energy at the F equals zero place. Um, so we're going to start with that. So the energy at the bottom we know is just spring potential energy. And we're going to say that our gravitational potential energy is equal to zero at the bottom. That's going to be my zero spot. So when we look at the equilibrium position, I know that I'm going to have some gravitational potential energy there. Uh, and I'm also going to have that kinetic energy from moving. But it turns out that from the unstretched length of the spring, I'm also going to have some spring potential energy. And that's one of the particularly difficult things about a first look at vertical springs. Um, if you're not at that unstretched place, you're always going to have some spring potential energy. So, um, let's go ahead and plug in 1 half K. Sorry, I went a little, little fast there. Don't know what happened. Um, I know that at the bottom, I'm stretched out a distance of A because that's how far from equilibrium I am, and H, because that's how far equilibrium was from the unstretched length. So 1 half K A plus H squared is equal to MGA. That's my gravitational potential that I have, because if gravitational potential energy is zero, when I'm pulled down a distance of A, um, I am a distance of A higher up at equilibrium plus one-half mv squared, plus one-half kh squared. 
So, um, what's going to be necessary is to expand that a plus h quantity squared thing out a little bit. No, oh, sorry. So, one half ka squared plus one half kh squared plus kah. The middle term is 2ah times one half. Gets rid of that one half. Equals mga plus one half mv squared plus one half kh squared. Now, looking at this already, my one half kh squareds go away. That's great. And if we go ahead and plug in what we know k to be equal to from um, from the expression that we already found, if we can say that k is mg over h, that's going to change that term for me a little bit, which is really, really good news. Okay, So if k is mg over h, that term becomes, so I still have 1 half ka squared. Now that term is going to become mg over h times ah. Those h's go away. So mg over h times ah equals mga plus 1 half mv squared. So if you look at that, I have an h and an h. Those go away. And so those two terms completely cancel out. And so when we look at this, I've got 1 half ka squared is equal to 1 half mv squared. That is fantastic news. Um, so it turns out that if I treat this just like a vertical spring, if I ignore gravitational energy completely and just treat it like a horizontal spring, rather, um, I get the exact same thing given that amplitude. And it doesn't have to be anything special. It's just any number that's not h. I'm going to get my maximum speed for anyway. That is definitely three exclamation points worthy. Um, so, that's good. What we're going to do now is, is look at um, the period of oscillation. And we're going to see if it's any different hanging like this than it was for a horizontal curve. So, we're going to start where we started before. Force equals... Well, we're going to start in a little bit different spot. We have to look at the sum of our forces acting on this block. At any given point, the sum of my forces is going to be Ky minus Mg. And it's going to be really important for us to measure Y from the unstretched length in that, in that downward direction, okay? So anywhere downward we go from our unstretched length, Ky is going to pull up and Mg is going to pull down if we're measuring Y uh, down from that unstretched length. So we really need to define Y as from that unstretched length down to wherever we are. So we're hoping we can get this into looking like something we've seen before. And so we can just circle it and say, hey, this is exactly what we want it to be. So let's start substituting things. There's my y direction. All right, so force is equal to, let's pull out a negative k. If we do that, I can eliminate the, the y that makes it negative. And that gives me mg over k. Now the reason it's important to do that is because I know that mg over k is equal to h. So let's make a substitution. So now I have force is negative k times h minus y. Now if, if you look at where we have y and where we have h, that h minus y thing is just the distance from the equilibrium point that my mass is at any given spot. Which is really, really, really good news. Because then I can just call it x. Where x is my distance from equilibrium. 
So this formula turns into f equals negative kx, which, good news, is what we've already done before. So I can say acceleration is equal to negative k over m times x. So omega squared, or omega, is the square root of k over m. And my period is 2 pi on the square root of m over k. Which is wonderful. So for the period, it behaves just like a horizontal spring. It's the same thing. So I don't have to worry about memorizing anything new. I know that for a vertical spring, uh, maximum kinetic energy, sorry, maximum velocity, not necessarily maximum kinetic energy, yeah, maximum velocity, maximum kinetic energy, and period are the exact same as a horizontal spring, which is good news. Three exclamation points worth of good news. Um, that's all we have for this. So...